I said I wasn't going to continue um, looking at Tesla stuff, but I found a few more things and more interesting information. So, you know, the wireless transmission of energy is through use of a, a large type Tesla coil device, which runs differently than the ones that you see on the internet. And Tesla referred to it as the magnifying transmitter. And so, yeah, I just drew like a little picture, I'm trying to be a little artsy. But, um, so, like, here's a good quote that he said It is a mere question of time when <clears throat> men will succeed in attaching their machinery to the very wheel works of nature. And it's so true because we see that with solar and hydroelectric, and, you know, we're using that, the, the natural energies of the universe. <laughs> so, um, uh, his magnifying transmitter was from like 1900 to like 1915 and you know, around those times it was end up um, dismantled um, but uh, th I'm just going to tell some more stuff about it well the the real use of a magnifying transmitter is I'll show this nice little picture here and so the magnifying transmitter um, Sets up nat can be set up on natural resources such as hydro uh, power like water, hydrothermal like you know vents, hydrothermal vents on the earth, the solar power, wind power, and then we can go to we could even say nuclear, coal, and gas. But yeah, that's the main resource that we could use. And what the magnifying chamber can do is give worldwide radio, TV, internet, Google, YouTube, and even GPS systems by interference of the um, waves. Um, it can also give industrial power transfer, so that's saying like your wall outlet, instead of having to plug things in, you could technically just have um, a resonant um, antenna, and the resonant antenna will pick up the energy. And so you can run basic needs like um, water purification, um, chemicals for farming, and this is the electrocute dirt. So you're putting nitrogens and um, uh, you know, like chemicals that are uh, needed for plants, and so it's also for lightning. I mean, lighting and food process, and you could even go to more things that are, you know that we need to run our economies and stuff. So it can run cars, planes, trains. The use of resonant antennas, um, either directly grounded or inductively grounded, and so directly grounded would be like your house, and it'd be a grounded rod placed in the ground and put into a resonant type transformer in your house for energy or it can even be inductively grounded where you wouldn't even have an, uh, a, a thing in the ground you just have um, because the energy is like a magnetic type wave it will um, flow through the coils anyways is you know at the resonant frequency so it can be inductively grounded so it means that you're not grounding it but using an inductor or a coil um, and just as a, even like a joke can can run even your lawnmower to cut the grass you know, and uh, it's completely safe, no radiation because it's such a low frequency. You know, as we get higher and higher frequencies, they resonate with the, either the atoms or the cells, and that, that's what breaks down tissue. But Tesla's is a low frequency, so it's like, you know, you need like, you know, x rays or uh, microwaves and high frequencies like that, which can cause damage and heat. And But low frequency is so low that it, you're not resonating with it, only the earth will be resonating with it. And, you know, it's not even doing anything to any of us or any of the nature or anything. So here's a tower. It's set up on a natural resource, which I'm just showing hydroelectric. You know, you can put whatever else you want here. And so it's sending the energy. You know, you got the primary coil type thing. It's just basic to the secondary coil. The um, capacitive type um, terminal on the top, which holds the energy. And forcing it into the ground with a lot longer um, metal, I think it was an iron type rod that's going really deep into the ground and so you know forces the energy into the ground at the resonant earth, at the earth's resonance frequency and so you know they just show like graphical stuff so you can run like the city and business and just you know connect it to the ground you know there's infinite amount of energy from what he was saying transportation so I just show a bus so like antenna and it also could be inductive you know it's not, it doesn't have any antenna Planes are going to be completely inductive. That he says that um, the energy can be so, will be strong enough that it will you know you can it will pass through a uh, wires higher in the air, so you could technically have an aircraft running. Residential, see a house, you can put an antenna in the ground. It could run your house, or you know you can you know whatever. And here's like a little car, inductively inductive grounding, so it's not completely grounded. And um, farming, this is just showing like a little like you know a field. 
you can certain coils you can set up in the ground like plates and you could use the energy from the the coil to electrocute ground soil and pull gases down from the air so like nitrogens and um what I, I don't know you know like the the chemicals that make plants you know help them really grow and you can force into the soil so you can make deserts really uh have a lot of you know nutrients or things like that you know so you know farming you know and then he even apply some of his specialized technologies like a Tesla aircraft was a um, is a form of his Tesla uh, turbine, and it's a high speed type motor that causes you know like forced uh, forced air to come out. But because it's inductively grounded, it's completely light, so you can use the weight of people or packages and stuff instead of having you know to carry the fuel and everything take away efficiency. So it's extremely efficient at that point because it's not holding its energy; it's taking the energy from an, like an inductive type state. So yeah, that's just the mini world. Maybe that maybe it'll be our future world someday. <laughs> but you know, like that's that's how it works. And now in the next part of the uh, video, I will show you like more calculations and stuff. I just want to show people that aren't never understood Tesla's work or just needs a basic understanding before they start looking into his work. So yeah, so that's the tower, just like a graphic. But the real tower, this is what it looks like. And you see how huge it is, and so. Next, the next video or our next part, I'll show you more calculations, and I hope you're interested. And comment and tell me what you think. And uh, so here we go. So I've been doing the research for you guys so far, and uh, you know it's almost uh, like cryptic. You know how his work is. Like he'll say something that's really important in a autobiography, say, or he'll say something that's you know important in the patent that he doesn't say you know to the the media at that time and so you kind of have to pull those little pieces together and it kind of and once you do that you start seeing the real um, idea that he was trying to say and so I'm gonna so right here I'm, I've been gonna be focusing mostly on this patent because it shows you the uh, the resin ideas more in detail and it tells you how the, the waves are set up on the earth and how energy is transferred and stuff like that so this is uh, actually I, I didn't show this before because I wasn't fully understanding what he was saying in his pen but now that I you know it took me like a while because I had to read it and like try to understand what he's saying and so like I'm gonna post this I'm gonna be you know between this and some of his autobiographical work and stuff like that that he said because it all kinda is like the same and there's little things, like I said before, that are like really interesting and that they don't say it in either one one or the other. So here's the patent number. Patented April 18th, 1905. So this is before that larger uh, Warden Cliff Tower looking patent that you see. And um, so yeah, that's what it's called. And so this, so coming down here, it's the same, you know, it's the same antenna where it's grounded and stuff to Earth. And now he's saying instead of he, like even I was sort of wrong in the last uh, video about him saying that the energy is put into the air. I mean it is because of inductive like magnetic um, action. So it, you know will be flowing in the earth and some will be out in the air, which will allow plane travel. And um, but it's mainly it's forcing the energy into the earth now. So uh, this this is like mainly like the capacity. And instead of the energy going shooting off in sparks, like I said before, which is inefficiency, and it still is inefficiency. Uh, the energy is for is into the capacity up here, which can hold a ton of energy, and it's forced back down through into the earth. And um, so, and this device, I'm not gonna really go into detail. Uh, this is a this device is really hard to um, understand. Like I was a little confused when I was reading it. And so, but it, what it mainly is is two plates that are set up to detect the the um, energy, the uh, either the earth current energy that he's creating, and. Um, you know this type of energy waves so either the plate can be put into the ground this can be put into another part of the ground or this one plate can be put in the air and the other one's grounded or they can even be inductively just left in the air I think he said and so it's like it's it's almost like a computer system here you gotta um, it's like it's it's hard to understand but you got like a oscillating circuit and then the frequencies coming in will be determined off of the frequency that the rotating wheel here is at and it's just it's really hard to understand but it's, it's some sort of either computer system or um, like a, almost like a, a sine wave uh, oscilloscope or something like that. And so the energy is coming in 
will be, you know, come in on the bar, like these bars here, which can be like uh, adjusted, and then the frequency will be put through the capacitor, and it'll be charged here, and it will be, and R is the uh, receiver, so that's basically another, um, like an identifying device that will help identify the waves and how fast they're going. So this thing's spinning, and the waves energy coming in, well, you know, it'll be, it'll, it's almost like a, uh, like a counting system and like a computer, but very basic and very, uh, you know, like ancient now. But that, that, and then the receiver is like another computing part that you can put in here to understand what's going on. And so, like, that's basically it. Uh, in the next video, uh, I'll talk about more about the patent here. And I'll also, uh, talk about his autobiography stuff and how it all is, like, related. Because I ain't going to run out of time on this video. So, uh, just go check out the next video.